injection is concerned one point let us remember fuel injection it is a mandatory for diesel engines because diesel is induct injected into the engine cylinder at the end of compression stroke whereas in petrol engine the fuel injection it is an alternative to the existing carburetors and i felt the fuel injection is concerned it is a system for admitting fuel into an internal combustion engine and the main difference between carburetors and fuel injection in fuel injection fuel is atomized forcibly by pumping it through a small nozzle under high pressure while a carburetor relies on suction created by intake air accelerated through a venturi tube to draw the fuel into the air stream and modern fuel injectors and more modern fuel injection system are designed specifically for the type of fuel used whether it is a petrol or diesel the specific type of and the specific number of seat and number and octane number it is used and if for the fuel injection again if we look into in the broader way the fuel injection it is a system for introducing the fuel into internal combustion engines and into automobile engines in petrol engine in carburetors it is always indirect injection whereas in injection system petrol is atomized and inducted into the intake manifold directly whereby air and the atomized petrol is mixed okay again i will repeat fuel injection system it is concerned it is mandatory for diesel engines whereas it is an alternative system to the existing carburetors this is what as uh, far as the fuel injection system applications are concerned to petrol engine and diesel engine and in this uh, fuel injection system we have two injection systems which are broadly classified single point fuel injection system it is also called throttle body fuel injection system no doubt the single point fuel injection system it is also called throttle body fuel injection system and the second fuel injection system is multi point fuel injection system in single point fuel injection system one or two injectors are mounted inside the throttle body assembly i will show the diagram you will understand in the single point or throttle body fuel injection system one or two injectors are mounted inside the throttle body assembly fuel is sprayed at one point or location at the center inlet of the engine intake manifold hence this method is called thr throttle body fuel injection system in multi point fuel injection system one injector for each cylinder and fuel is sprayed in more than one location and this multi point fuel injection system it is also called port fuel injection system okay so as for this fuel injection is concerned the primary difference between carburetors and fuel injection in fuel injection system fuel is atomized through a small nozzle under high pressure while a carburetor relies on suction created by intake air accelerated through a venturi tube to draw the fuel into air stream and as i said the injection system you can see they are classified into single point fuel injection system multi point fuel injection system single point fuel injection system is also called throttle body fuel injection system whereas port the multi point fuel injection system it is also called port injection system then what are the advantages of fuel injection system 
or the existing injection system what are the existing fuel injection system is existing always as long as the diesel engines come into existence but the fuel injection system it has come into existence for petrol engines after 1990 the vehicles which are manufactured particularly four wheelers which are manufactured after 1990 the fuel injection system is it is also introduced for petrol engines then what are the advantages of fuel injection system over the existing what is the existing in the spark ignition engine the carburetors are the existing system what are the advantages of fuel injection system if we look into fuel injection system improves the fuel distribution in multi cylinder engines and fuel injection system increases the volumetric efficiency if the volumetric efficiency increases the combustion efficiency increases burning efficiency increases more heat is produced so by more work is produced during expansion process fuel injection reduces loss of fuel during scavenging and fuel injection minimizes the detonation tendency in spark ignition engines these are the advantages which are associated with the as far as the fuel injection are concerned with the existing fuel injection system and what are the components involved in fuel injection system the fuel injection system consists of a number of components which perform the task like metering metering in the sense the required amount of fuel has to be atomized and distribution of the atomized fuel into the air mass depending on the speed and load of the engine the injection system must maintain the required air fuel ratio okay so these are the different uh, this thing and as far as the single point or throttle body injection system is concerned okay i will show the figure with this figure i will explain this is the single point fuel in you can see the figure okay so i will bring the cursor here i will bring the cursor this is the intake manifold there are number these are the cylinder number of cylinders this is the intake manifold here one injector there may be one or two injectors may be there okay and here you can see the air is entering into the manifold air is entering into the manifold air is entering into the manifold okay and this and here the fuel is injected air is uh, inducted into the intake manifold whereby they are going to mix and how it works this is the first Uh, fuel injection system which is introduced for petrol engines this is the replacement for carburetor and this is the stepping stone for multi a point fuel injection system okay so this uh, single point injection system it is uh, having an advantage over the existing carburetor system whereby slight there is a slight improvement in the combustion efficiency which is achieved with this system okay and uh, as far as and again this is also called as i said throttle body injection system at one point at anywhere near the intake manifold one or two injectors are placed here only one but particularly for heavy duty for cars and all only one injector will be there for heavy duty engines there may be one or two additional injectors will be incorporated over the the top of the inlet manifold okay this is how the single point or throttle body fuel injection system it works and now coming to this uh, multi point fuel injection system as far as this multi point fuel injection system is concerned okay here a separate injector nozzle to each cylinder is located right outside its inlet port which is why this is called the port in injection system okay so this is the see in uh, previous case single point fuel injection system you can see there is uh, one or two injection injectors fuel nozzles are located at the top of the inlet intake manifold okay there is no separate nozzles for each and every cylinder but in case of multi point fuel injection system 
each cylinders are provided with a fuel nozzle at the inlet port of the cylinder this is why it is called port injection system okay so as for this uh, multi point fuel injection systems are concerned the purpose of this system is to supply proper air fuel mixture to each cylinder of the engine okay i was telling for each cylinder in the multi cylinder engine a separate fuel nozzle is located through at the port of inlet manifold of the this thing okay so this this is okay again in multi point fuel injection system we have uh, port injection system as well as sequential multi point fuel injection system okay you can see here i will show you the port injection system you can see here the figure the figure which shows so it consists of oh, how many cylinders four cylinders one two three four okay at the inlet port of the cylinder each cylinder you can see is provided with a this is these are the fuel injectors you can see very clearly each cylinders are provided with a fuel injector nozzle okay the injector is fitted in the inlet manifold near the inlet valve the uniform mixture formed enters into the cylinder every cylinder you can see in the figure every cylinder is provided with a separate injector in multi cylinder engine as shown in the figure okay this is another this thing this is called sequential this is also multi point fuel injection system or port injection system okay this is called sequential multi point fuel injection system okay so in this sequential here also in this system also you can see each cylinders are provided with a fuel a separate fuel injector separate fuel you can see at the inlet port of the intake manifold of each cylinder okay are provided but only difference between the previous one this one is previous one is the according to the firing order the fuel is injected whereas in this case all the fuel injectors will inject the fuel simultaneously at the same time this is the difference between the previous one and this one okay so in this system uh, it is the timing is simultaneously fuel injection will happen and uh, in some cases uh, the according to the firing order in some cases according to the uh, timing it is required generally this sequential multi point fuel injection system it is uh, recommended for the light vehicles light four wheelers that is car and buses whereas in case of uh, previous one the multi point port injection system there the fuel will be injected according to the according to the firing order of the multi cylinder engine and that system is used in heavy duty engines it is used in heavy duty engines now we should see another important components the fuel pumps what is this fuel pump the main function of the fuel pump whether it is a petrol engine or whether it is a diesel engine the object of the fuel pump is it pumps the fuel from the fuel tank to the fuel injector again i am repeating the main function of these fuel pumps whether it is a petrol engine or diesel engine the function of fuel pumps is to pump the fuel at higher pressure from fuel tank to the fuel injector okay so if you look into in petrol engine a fuel pump transfers petrol from tank to the carburetor 
or to the fuel injection system or to the injector okay and as far as the fuel pumps are concerned two commonly used fuel pumps are mechanical fuel pump electrical fuel pump there are two types of pumps mechanical fuel pump and electrical fuel pump two again i will repeat the function of fuel pump whether it is a petrol or diesel the function of the fuel pump is it pumps the fuel at higher pressure from tank to the injector or to the carburetor okay we have two kinds of fuel pumps one is mechanical fuel pump another one is electrical fuel pump okay so as far as the mechanical fuel pump is concerned i will explain its working principle with the diagram this is the mechanical fuel pump and here you can see okay here you can see a diaphragm you can i will bring the cursor here you will you can see this is the diaphragm okay these are the springs okay and uh, this is the suction valve where fuel enters to the pump and this is the delivery valve where through this the fuel is delivered to the fuel injector okay this is how and uh, here you can see the rod fuel rod and here you can see this is the rocker arm pivot and this is the eccentric this is the eccentric okay this is the eccentric now how it works i will explain with figure just you concentrate on the figure i will explain how it works this mechanical fuel pump it is a diaphragm type of fuel pump where diaphragm are you seeing diaphragm type of fuel pump it is mounted on the engine it is mounted on the engine and this fuel pump is mounted on the engine okay it is mounted on the engine you can see it is mounted on the engine and is operated by an eccentric this is the eccentric is operated by an eccentric this is the eccentric okay eccentric it consists of a camshaft and this camshaft is uh, connected to the engine crankshaft and this camshaft rotate at half the speed of engine crankshaft okay so it is uh, this is mounted on the engine and is operated by an eccentric mounted on the camshaft of the you can see the camshaft mounted on the camshaft of the engine the pump consists of a spring loaded flexible diaphragm actuated by a rocker or actuated by a rocker you can see a rocker or and which is in turn operated by an eccentric this rocker arm is operated by an eccentric okay how it works as the rocker arm is moved by the eccentric the diaphragm is pulled down the diaphragm comes down the diaphragm is pulled down causes a partial vacuum in the chamber okay this causes the inlet valve to open and admits the fuel into the pump chamber through the strainer further rotation of the eccentric will release the rocker arm and the diaphragm moves up moves up once when the diaphragm moves up i'll bring the cursor this inlet valve closes and the exhaust valve opens the exit valve opens through this open exhaust valve the fuel is delivered to the injector okay okay when the float chamber is full of petrol when the float chamber is full of float chamber you have seen in carburetor when the float chamber is full of petrol pumping up more fuel is not possible not possible because already it is filled okay if the engine runs continuously at light loads at light loads the camshaft will be running all the time and there is a loss of energy this may damage the pump itself to avoid this the rocker arm and pull rod pivot rod they are made up of with flexible connections and when the float chamber is full the diaphragm is not operated through the camshaft even though the camshaft is running okay so this is operated with a this thing again i will repeat how it works this is the diaphragm this is the pivot and rocker arm and this is the uh, 
eccentric once when the eccentric started moving by then this diaphragm wall this rocker arm will pulls down the diaphragm once when the diaphragm is come down thereby a suction is created and through the creation of the suction wall the inlet wall opens through this opened inlet wall the fuel from the tank is entering into the chamber and as again the continuous motion of this uh, eccentric again the uh, this diaphragm will move up, the inlet wall closes and the exit exit wall opens through the exit wall the fuel which is inducted from the fuel tank is delivered to the injector is delivered to the injector or carburetor this is how this mechanical fuel pump works now as far as the electric fuel pump is concerned here the working principle is similar to as we have seen the mechanical fuel pump but uh, here the electric uh, control units are used as far as the operation of the diaphragm is concerned okay here i will show and explain this this is the electrical type of uh, fuel pump you can see this pump contains a flag you you can see this electrical pump con uh, contains a flexible diaphragm which is operated by electrical means the middle of the diaphragm the middle of the diaphragm is fixed to an armature a rod extends from middle of diaphragm and passes through a center hole in the electromagnet solenoid so this is the rod okay this i will show you this is the diaphragm this is the rod and this is extended through the armature armature the other end of the rod carries electrical contact points okay electrical see this is the electrical contact points return springs are used to keep the diaphragm in position closing the ignition switch if we close the ignition switch if we close the ignition switch energizes the electromagnetic windings magnetic field is produced the magnetic flux which is generated which pulls the armature compressing the return spring and thereby moves the diaphragm upwards thereby move the diaphragm up this causes suction in the pump chamber and the fuel disconnect the breaker points and this interrupts the electrical supply this interrupt the electrical supply the electromagnet is de-energized and the armature falls back due to spring action this causes the diaphragm to move down creating pressure in the chamber to open the outlet wall the fuel is delivered to the float chamber or to the injector the cycle repeats this is how it is going to the operating principle if you look into the operating principle of the mechanically operated or mechanical fuel pump or electrical fuel pump is concerned same in electrical fuel pump it is operated with the electrical armature solenoid magnetic field whereas in case of previously the mechanical the fuel pump it is operated with the engine crankshaft it is operated with the engine crankshaft otherwise the working principle is same otherwise the working principle is same right now we should look into the fuel injectors we should what are the fuel injectors what the fuel injectors will do so in simple you can say the main function of fuel injectors is it break the fuel into smaller particles it atomizes the fuel okay this is the function of fuel injector whether the fuel injector used in petrol engine or whether the fuel injector which is used in diesel engine the function of fuel injector it is same the main function of fuel injector again i will repeat the fuel injector breaks up the fuel into smaller particles and atomizes the fuel into the vapor form okay as far as the different types of uh, fuel pumps are concerned we have two different kinds of fuel pump one is mechanical fuel pump 
and another one is electronic fuel pump okay as far as the mechanical fuel pumps are concerned generally today as the mechanical injectors are not much used of whatever the vehicles which are manufactured after 2000 all are using this electronic type of fuel injectors okay but even though it is necessary and it, it is important to know how it works and the same principle it is taken for electronic fuel injector also okay as far as the mechanical fuel injector is concerned i will explain this with the diagram this is the <coughs> fuel injector see you can see it consists of okay this is the fuel tank this is the fuel filter this is the pressure pump and this is the relief valve this is the metering chamber then uh, it goes to the fuel goes to the uh, this is the fuel injector and there are this the there are more than one fuel injector okay this is one fuel injector which is shown and other fuel injectors are here okay so this is how this thing it is going to happen and here the air is uh, taken to the injector and fuel is supplied to the injector the function of fuel is the injector is again i will repeat it breaks up the fuel into the smaller particles and atomizes the fuel how it works this mechanical this mechanical fuel injector it consists of a electrical d1 fuel pump which delivers fuel at a specified pressure at a specified pressure okay so up to 70 bar pressure into a metering distributor the relief hole so what this you can see is the relief hole i will bring the the relief hole the relief hole returns excess fuel to the tank and thus maintains the metering distributor constant and this relief hole it supplies the required amount of uh, fuel to this metering distributor and anything is excess it sends back to the fuel tank it sends back to the fuel tank the metering distributor supplies this is the i will bring the cursor here you can see the metering distributor this metering distributor supply fuel to each injector in turn okay the quantity of fuel delivered is also controlled in the distributor by engine manifold pressure the injector is held closed until fuel pressure opens to deliver the atomized spray of fuel again once again i will repeat this main function you should remember the main function of this fuel injector it breaks the fuel into smaller particles whether it is a petrol or diesel the fuel injector breaks the fuel into smaller particles and atomizes and it supplies in the form of vapor spray okay this is how and as far as the electronic or electrical this thing fuel injectors are concerned okay, electric fuel pump draws the fuel from the tank to a filter and supply the same to the injectors at a pressure which is held constant by means of a fuel pressure okay it consists of several sensors based on the sensors this electronic control unit works what are the sensors manifold absolute pressure sensor barometric pressure which reads the atmospheric pressure barometric pressure sensor throttle position sensor coolant temperature sensor vehicle speed sensor so this you can see okay this is the uh, schematic diagram of electronic fuel injection system whereby it consists of uh, this is i will start from here this is the fuel tank this is the filter this is the filter and this is the electric pump and this is the fuel regulator and the fuel coming to the injector okay and this is air is entering here and fuel is injected injected here air is entering at this point fuel is injected here air and fuel will mix and they will be supplied to the combustion chamber of the cylinder this is how and uh, 
this electric pump draws the fuel from the tank through a filter a filter will be there and supply the same to the injectors at a pressure which is held constant by means of a fuel pressure regulator which returns the excess fuel to the tank okay this regulator this is the fuel regulator the function of this fuel regulator is it uh, supplies the meter and required quantity of fuel to the injector to the injector this electric pump works with the magnetic flux generation okay this is how this thing as far as the operating principle of the mechanical and dc is concerned same whereas in the previous case we can see it is uh, the normal pump here the electrical pump is used for this thing i know another important component in the fuel supply system it is fuel gauges this fuel gauges the main function of fuel gauges okay the main function of fuel gauges it reads the amount of fuel available in the float chamber the amount of fuel available in the fuel tank okay these fuel gauges are equipped with an electrically operated fuel gauge for indicating level of fuel in the tank two types of fuel gauges are used in automobile as of today one is thermostatic type fuel gauges another one is electromagnetic type fuel gauges both will have sensing unit as well as a receiving unit as far as the sending unit is concerned it consists of a float controlled rheostat or a variable register the unit is mounted on the fuel tank with float and float arm extending into the tank the float always follow the level of fuel which is available in the tank the float position determines the amount of electrical resistance within the variable register which controls the amount of electricity sent to the receiving unit on the instrumental panel and whatever the sending unit senses it will send to the receiving unit this receiving unit is mounted on the instrument panel and by the amount of electricity received from the sending unit it indicates on a calibrated gauge the amount of fuel which is available in the tank two types of fuel gauges which are used in present automobiles one is thermostatic type another one is electromagnetic type as far as the thermostatic fuel gauges are concerned this is the thermostatic fuel gauge you can see this fuel gauge it consists of a heating coil indicator is there biometallic arm is there this is the voltage regulator this is the ignition switch and this is the fuel tank this is the fuel tank and this is the fuel oil available in the tank this is the float okay and float or float needle this is the sending unit and this is the resistance wire this is the thermostatic fuel gauge this uh, in this thermostatic is thermostatic fuel gauge the receiving unit contains a heating coil say so this is receiving unit it consists of a heating coil when the fuel tank is low at grounded sliding contact in the sending unit controlled by float is near the end of variable resistance which is controlled by voltage regulator okay when the tank is filled the float rises with the fuel level and moves the grounded sliding contacts towards the beginning of resistance wire okay so this is where you can see a fine mesh a fine mesh gauge is used to as a filter to clean the petrol it is more suitable where petrol contains very large dust particles this thermostatic fuel gauges are more preferred where the petrol which is used contains more dust particles but 
these thermostatic fuel gauges are not so effective in preventing the fine particles and water from going into the from going inside the cylinder what happens if the moisture goes inside cylinder thereby the more again the energy required for combustion to be increased once energy required increases then the some energy excess energy is used for compression purpose okay to for ordinary purpose this can be used but for this is very much recommended where the petrol which is used it consists of large quantity of dust okay but it is not so effective thermostatic we will guess it is not effective in reading and in filtering the fine particles which are present and the moisture content which are present these two are not possible to be filtered and these two fine particles and the moisture content will enter into the engine cylinder along with the petrol along with the fuel okay and this is very good and around 80 percentage of the automobiles are using this thermostatic fuel gauges and now we should see another important this thing is injection pump so far we have seen the fuel pump fuel pump its objective is it supplies fuel uh, from the uh, fuel tank to the carburetor and this fuel injection is it pumps the fuel from this injector to the from the carburetor to the injector okay and for the fuel injection pump it is concerned it delivers accurately metered quantity of fuel under high pressure under high pressure okay at correct instant and in correct sequence to the injector fitted in each cylinder okay particularly the objective of fuel injector in case of diesel engine is very much appreciable because in diesel engine the injection pressure should be around 70 to 300 bar pressure and in some heavy duty engines the injection pressure will be 2000 bar and this much of pressure it is created by the fuel injection pump okay and the timing gears are incorporated to meter exactly how much amount of fuel to be injected and to what pressure and the pressure required by the inject injector it is uh, sensed by the requirement of the engine the load on the engine the speed on the engine okay at an average the pumping pressure the injector pressure in diesel engines it should be around 70 to 300 bar okay 70 to 300 bar there are two types of uh, fuel injection pumps and for the diesel engines are concerned which are used in practice one is jerk fuel injection pump another one is distributor type fuel injection pump one is okay again i am telling this fuel injection pump these are recommended for diesel engines in diesel engines the fuel injection pump its objective it is very much appreciated because this is the device which creates the required pressure by the injector and the required pressure by the injector it is according to the engine requirement what are the engine requirement engine requirement is one is engine speed another one is the load which is acting on the engine these two play very very important role as far as this thing see general pressures to be created at normal working conditions for light vehicles light diesel vehicles the pressures to be created by the fuel injection pump is around 70 to 30 bar okay for heavy duty engines the pressures created may be more than 2000 bar okay or the timing gears are provided in these type of fuel injection pumps which meters the required amount of fuel at pressure to be supplied to the injector okay and these timing gears are directly connected to the 
accelerator pump. These are directly connect accelerator pedal of the engine automobile. Accelerator pedal of the automobile. Okay. See the frequency of injection is quite high, but the volume of uh, fuel injection is very very low. The volume of fuel injection per injection it is very very low but the frequency of fuel injection in diesel engines is quite high for example if you look into in a four one example is given here for four stroke four cylinder diesel engine at maximum speed around 6000 rpm minimum 150 not rpm minimum 150 ml of fuel to be metered and this much of fuel to be injected 20 times in a second. Okay. See, again, I will repeat the volume of fuel injection is very less and the frequency of fuel injection is more. Okay. So for each second, around 20 times the fuel has to be injected around 150 ml approximately. This is the requirement for a four stroke, four cylinder diesel engine, which is operating at a speed of 6000 RPM. At a speed of 6000 RPM. The fuel injection pumps are classified into two categories. One is jerk fuel pump, fuel injection pump. Another one is distributor fuel injection pump. Okay. As far as this jerk fuel pump is concerned, it is uh, it consists of a spring-loaded delivery wall. It consists of I will show you just you see the which are the components required. I will show you the figure and I will explain how it works. This jerk fuel injection pump it consists of a spring-loaded delivery wall, plunger, control sleeve, and control rack. The fuel quality to be injected is controlled by the plunger. Plunger, plunger which acts as a piston. Plunger which contains a helix at the top of it. The plunger in turn operated by using a cam and a tappet. Okay. So in this pump, the plunger stroke remains constant. In this pump, the plunger stroke remains constant, but the effective stroke is reduced by changing the position of helix which is located on the top of the plunger with respect to fuel inlet port. The cam produces forward or delivery stroke and the action of spring returns the plunger. As the plunger performs the downward stroke, it uncovers the inlet port, it opens the inlet port present in the barrel at atmospheric pressure and fills the space above the plunger and also vertical groove and space below the helix. When the plunger rises up, it, it closes the ports and compresses the fuel. During this compression, what happens? The pressure of fuel, which is available in the chamber, it is increased. The compressed fuel lifts the delivery wall and it is supplied to the injector through a delivery wall. Okay, then here you can see this is. Add the plunger. See here, I will show you this is the plunger. I will bring the cursor here. This is the plunger. You see the plunger. I will explain how it works. As this plunger moves upward, the spill port will be uncovered. The spill port will be uncovered by the plunger helix and the helical groove on the plunger connects the space above the plunger with the suction line. The oil at high pressure in the space above the plunger, the compressed oil above the plunger is passed back into the pump and thereby decreases the pressure near the delivery wall. The fuel quantity delivered through a delivery wall depends upon the opening position of the spill port with respect to the helical groove. Depending on the load on the engine, the position of helical groove with respect to spill port can be varied 
by rotating plunger with control rack with control rack you can see the control rack at the top okay the quantity of fuel can be varied from zero so that it required the full load by varying the position of the rack by varying the position of the rack okay the amount of fuel delivered and the pressure at which it delivered it depends and this the pressure again i will tell you the pressure required by the injector it is all according to the engine requirement what are the engine requirement according to the speed of the engine according to the load which is acting on the engine by the automobile in operation by the automobile in operation okay i know what are the functions of automobile injector okay the fuel injector we are talking what are the function of fuel injector okay fuel injector the function i was telling to atomize the fuel to the required degree of fineness to distribute the fuel for proper mixing of fuel and air to prevent fuel injection on cylinder walls and top of the piston the fuel injection must start and stop instantaneously according to the requirement and what is the requirement the fuel injection should start few crank angles before the piston reaches tdc and it should uh, close it should stop injection should stop the few crank angle rotations after the tdc after the tdc position of the piston okay this is how it is going to this thing and uh, now here one more you can see this is the fuel one type of fuel injector what is this it is it is called spring loaded fuel injector and we have seen what are the functions of fuel injector we so far we have seen different types of fuel injector pumps and we discussed why the injectors are used what are the functions of main function of injector i usually quite frequently used to tell you fuel injector breaks up the fuel into smaller particles and it atomizes in the vapor form the main function of fuel injector it atomizes the fuel to the required degree of fineness to distribute the fuel for proper mixing of fuel and air okay and to prevent the fuel injection on cylinder walls and top of the piston the fuel injection the main quality another important quality of fuel injection fuel injection must stop and it should start instantaneously according to the requirement i was telling the injection should start some crank angle rotation before piston reaches tdc and it should stop injection should stop few degree crank rotations after piston starts moving from tdc okay here in the picture you are seeing a spring loaded fuel injector which is used in majority of the automobiles which is used in majority of the automobiles a spring loaded fuel injector which is shown on the figure spring loaded fuel injector which is shown on the figure the fuel pump supply the fuel to the injector according to the injector pressure and the fuel pump supply fuel to the injector and high pressure fuel lift the spring loaded wall <clears throat> lift the spring loaded wall the fuel is then injected into the combustion chamber of the engine cylinder as the pressure decreases the wall automatically closed by the spring force the duration of open period of the wall controls the amount of fuel injected into the combustion chamber again i am repeating this is the spring loaded uh, injector and as the springs are compressed the wall opens through this open wall 
whatever the fuel which is supplied by the fuel injection pump at higher pressure it is uh, entering and uh, delivering through this open port okay at high pressure this is what it is going to happen and now another very now we have seen the fuel gauges fuel injection pump different types of fuel injection pump and the fuel injector what are the function of fuel injector again i am telling the function you must remember quite frequently main function is it breaks up the fuel or diesel into smaller particles so it atomizes and supplies in the finer vapor form okay this is what the function and here the operation of this spring loaded fuel injector which is explained and this is the injector this type of injector which is shown in the figure it is used in almost all the automobiles which are presently in operation okay another important system which is left out that is the governing and fuel control what is this governing system what is this governing system what do you mean by governing system generally governors are used to keep the speed constant at all the working conditions of the engine at all the variable loads which are acting on the engine how this governors will operate governors will operate and the speed of the engine is maintained by the system constant at all the load conditions on the engine by varying the air fuel mixture supplied to the engine cylinder okay and generally generally these governors and this governing system is placed between is placed between carburetor and the intake manifold whatever the governors which are used they are placed between carburetor and the intake manifold okay again i will repeat the main function of governors is to control the speed of the engine constant at all the working conditions of the engine these governor systems are placed between carburetor and the intake manifold and vacuum and centrifugal type of governors are most commonly used most commonly used and there are three types of uh, this thing governors are used one is hit and miss uh, type of governors one is quality governing system and another one is quantity governing system the, these are the three different types of governing system which are used in internal combustion engines okay and all this uh, this thing uh, governing system will have vacuum and centrifugal type of governors which are most commonly used okay so for example if the engine load decreases okay if the load on the engine decreases what happens the speed of the engine will what happened to the speed speed will increase but we the engine wanted the constant speed at all load condition what is to be done and during this condition as the engine load decreases the speed of the engine increases during this condition fuel supply is not decreased and if the load increases speed begins to decrease if the fuel supply is not increased okay so that means the decreasing of the fuel supply at decreased load and increasing the fuel supply at increasing the load this is done with a system called governing system governing system again i will repeat governing system maintain the speed constant at all the working at different variable conditions of the engine a different variable load acting on the engine there are three types of governing systems which are in used again i am telling one is uh, hit and miss governing system another one is quality governing system another one is quantity governing system okay and these governors are placed where these are located these governors are located between carburetor and inlet manifold okay all the governors will have the vacuum and centrifugal type of governors which are most commonly used okay 
and uh, these governors will play very important role again i'm repeating without governors also the engine will operate without governing system will also the engine is going to operate what happens if there is a governing system is not there okay what happens by then for example due to some regions if the load on the engine decreases if there is no governing system if there is no governing system what is going to happen the speed of the engine increases if the speed of the engine increases then to take the control of the vehicle the it is very difficult for the driver to manage okay and another condition which is existing uh, as per the thing if load on the engine increases if the load on the engine increases if there is no governing system in the engine what is going to happen for the engine the speed of the engine decreases the speed of the engine decreases okay then uh, this is has to be managed by a controlling unit okay if there is no controlling unit if there is no governing system it is very difficult for the driver to manage the engine while the variable working conditions while the engine or automobile is in operation okay the governor supplies the fuel to the engine or air fuel mixture to the engine the governor the governing system it supplies air fuel mixture to the engine depending on depending on the engine load depending on engine load i maintain the speed constant again i am repeating the governing system how it works it supplies the fuel to the engine according to the engine load and maintains the engine speed constant okay and what are the different methods of governing system i was telling there are three different governing systems are there one is heat time miss governing system this system is used in gas engines heat time miss governing system this system is used in gas engines okay in this method the fuel supply completely cut off during few cycles of the engine okay in heat and wish method the fuel supply is completely cut off during few cycles of the engine okay this is used in gas engines and another governing system and another governing system that is quality governing system depending on the engine load depending on the engine load the fuel supply per cycle of the engine is varied that is air fuel ratio is changed depending on the load acting on the engine during its operation at high loads rich mixture is supplied and lean mixture is supplied at low loads this method quality governing system is used in case of diesel engines so what happens if the load on the engine increases okay more quantity of diesel has to be injected and the, we cannot vary the amount of air amount of air supplied to the engine because during uh, such a process itself the air is injected that is the only one uh, process where air is uh, introduced into the engine system okay so what have at high loads once when the load on the engine is more more fuel more diesel has to be injected into the engine cylinder for low loads for low loads on the engine less amount of fuel with a small a slightly less pressure the pressure even though it is slightly less pressure this pressure should be more than cylinder pressure it should be injected for low loads on the engine less amount of diesel is injected for high loads more amount of fuel so this is how this quality governing system it is used in case of diesel engines it is in, used in case of diesel engines and as far as the quantity governing system is concerned in this method the quantity of this quantity governing system is used in case of petrol engines this quantity governing system is used in case of petrol engine 
in this method the quantity of air fuel mixture supplied is varied according to the load on the engine the air fuel ratio of the mixture supplied to the engine at all loads remains nearly constant and this quantity governing system is used in case of petrol engines it is used in case of petrol engine and this is how the governing system and the different types of governing system 